All right, guys, I think it's running and it's working. I hope, I hope. It looks like it's working. I think it's really working. Hello, everybody. You are watching Ballerina Badass. My name is George Reed. Oh my gosh, what a week. I did not do the point shoot party on Tuesday because I certainly did not want to interrupt that presidential debate that happened, which I don't feel like talking about. And Thursday also didn't happen because it was just that week. It was just that week. So I'm definitely showing up today. Um, point shoot party may not happen this Tuesday either, just depending on the timing of when I get back. I'm going on a mini vacation, uh, but I will be definitely getting back into the swing of things in the next week or so with the live streaming point shoot parties, uh, Thursday uh, live stream ballet class, which I'm pretty much giving myself, but if you want to follow along or watch and laugh, feel free. And then this point shoe workout, which again, this is all mostly for me as I'm working to just kind of get myself back in shape, whatever shape that might be this time around, because I'm not really trying to pursue, I'm not trying to pursue a full-time ballet career anymore. <laughs> But uh, I do want to continue to dance, and I love it, and I want to be able to keep doing it. And boy, let me tell you, use it or lose it, my friends. Uh, you, you, you stop for too long, it's, it's hard to come back. So one of the things is I noticed, well, point shoe party, I'm working on sewing these shoes, but then I'm like, well, let's then have time to try them out. So I know someone had asked me a question about... Um, what's going on with classes in uh, California, I've got to answer that question. I will try to answer that comment later. But the previous point shoe party I did, you saw me working on these Russian points. They're not fully sewn yet, so I won't be working with them today specifically. I do think I have... Ah, good. I have the footies. Let's see what else we have here. I did kind of throw this together today. I'm not as prepared. I will own that. Um, I did, as you know, bake the freed shoes in the oven and they're feeling, oh, they're feeling much better. That's good. But I don't have the elastics on them yet and I really don't want to, I want to get the elastics on before I start using them. So I think today I'm going to be using a different pair of shoes to just kind of warm up. I need to find the other footy though. Where is the other footy? Or else I've got to do the full toe tape. Which, if you all know me from way back when, I did a lot of toe taping. I believe in it. I think it protects your feet very well. Let's see. Is there another footy in here? Such an exciting class. Yeah. There you are. These things are like the awesome cheats, right? Of just put these soft... I don't even know what they're made of. Toe caps. They're not really toe caps, but these footy things in your shoes, and voila, you are ready to go. Um, the question is, are these strong enough? So what I'm going to try working with today, the goal for me today, and if you all want to follow along for yourself, here's the deal. I haven't been working on point for, God, at least a year, if not more. Now, because of that, I noticed when I went to just throw my point shoes back on, boy, I had a hard time really being able to dance on them feeling safe on my point shoes because you use a certain amount of different muscles when you're dancing on point. You're really lifting up and out of your point shoes. And when you're out of the habit, it's really dangerous just to throw them back on and try and go and do pirouettes, right? Much less foites, which if any of you know me, you know foites are the bane of my existence and I was never really good at, good at them, I don't think. Maybe once in my life, back in the day. Um, but what I'm trying to do with this every Sunday live stream class is work on basic at the bar point exercises for now until I get better and then I can start coming into the center again to get my ankle strength back, my toe strength back, and then of course all these other muscles and everything which need to continue to be worked through regular ballet class, Pilates, uh, yoga, things like that because it takes every muscle in your body, I, from my training at least as, as a ballet dancer, to really do it properly and not get injured. Now. One point class a week does not a dancer make, in my opinion. Um, if you are someone who is wanting to do point work, um, I recommend you get to that bar. Start with one a week and then work up to two a week. And then maybe at least three times a week, get at least a half hour in at the bar. Uh, I, you know, I've seen a lot of adult dancers who have not been professional dancers. They didn't come up through the system of 
training to be as a pre-professional and they just throw their point shoes on and they walk around and I'm always scared that they're going to break an ankle. I can't stop you. You know, um, if you were in my class, I wouldn't let you leave the bar. You'd probably hate me and never want to come back to my class. I've seen those adult dancers. I don't know what the hell they're thinking, but I guess they become an adult and they're like, well, I'm an adult, so I can do what I want. And it's like, that's great. Um, not in my class, but, uh, Yes, take your time, stay at the bar, really get that strength in place before you come running out to the center to do stuff. Um, that's my recommendation. So let's see what happens today with this. I'm gonna try these. These Russian points are older. Um, I've used them sometimes just for ballet class. I just have a piece of elastic here. I wanna see if they can hold me up enough just to do my basic releves at the bar, which is what I wanna focus on today. And I'm gonna slip on these little footy foots which again, uh, when I was dancing full time, what I did is I taped every single toe and then I didn't wear anything in the shoe. No paper towel, no lambswool, no nothing. That's a very old school way of doing things. Some dancers believe in it. Um, it worked well for me at the time, but today I'm gonna try this. So I've, it, the shoe just slips right on. So that's great. Yep, that, that's fine. There's not an issue here yet. Excuse me, but we're not dancing yet, so let's just see. I just taught my Zoom ballet class. This is my 11 a.m. busted up, broken down ballet class, beginner, beginner. And every week's different, and it really is kind of like the class you give yourself before you take class some, somewhat. Um, I do a lot of really basic exercise, strengthening things, things like that. Um, and it's for, you know, people over the age of 18 who just want to do something to keep their bodies moving. Um, it's free. I really started this during the pandemic, really for myself and also for other dancers out there who just can't afford any class at all, but want to do something for themselves. So if any of you are ever interested in joining my Zoom class, it's every Sunday at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. It is free. Yes, you can donate if you want to, but um, people are hurting right now for money. I know that. And I want to be able to share this with you guys to help you. So that being said, here are the points. See, I can't see. I wish I could just watch. Can I just see this? I would really like to just watch this. Hold on, guys. I'm just setting this up so I can see myself. There we go. But then I can't see the comments. Well, that's annoying. Can I do both? No, you can't do both. I don't like that. I want to be able to watch myself and see your comments. I know. You guys are going to go, oh, Georgia, you just do this. You just do that. Pop out chat. Yes, pop out chat. There it is. La, 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 la. Okay. So we put the chat over here. And then, will this let me do this? We're going to mess with this a bit. Sorry, guys. But I'm trying to figure it out. Yeah. If I do that. Oh, I can't bring the chat in front. That is annoying. There should be a way to watch the whole thing. And see the chat. Oh, you're a bad boo boo. So let me do this. We're gonna. Okay. Well, so much for that. You know what? I'm gonna cut off the chat and just put myself big. If you guys have comments, I'll check all the comments at the end of my video and then try to respond to everybody. I'm gonna be working at the bar, so I won't be really able to stop and respond to all the chat, chatty chat. I know I should have someone here to like run my chat while I'm working, but I don't yet. So. I am going to put myself on the big screen because I need to see what's going on with my feet. So here we go. Move this a little way. I know. Very exciting, everybody. Very exciting. So I have already taken a ballet class, which has gotten me warmed up. I'm already feeling my toes at the end of these shoes. Ooh, my feet have definitely spread, I think, a bit. And white shoes full time or even <laughs> regular shoes. These feel a little soft. I'm trying to see. Because again, I am so out of shape. First of all, I am definitely heavier than I normally am. So that's more weight that my feet have to basically carry. Um, can these shoes, am I strong enough to lift up out of these shoes? Let's see. So I'm going to do a careful roll through. Let's see how we are. Mm. It's not great. It's okay, but it's not great. Um... I'm trying to think. I'm going to try this for today and play with it and see what I can do. 
but I don't know if these shoes are strong enough right now, or let's face it, I'm strong enough right now to hold myself up in a releve um, on one foot. We're gonna, we're gonna start with some basic stuff. So I'm gonna just start here in parallel. Now I have some money, I have some big bunions, right? My front toes, I get them to touch together. So I'm gonna make sure that my heels are together. I've got lifting up and my knees are together. Right, I know it's hard to see because I'm wearing all black on a black background. So I should probably show you all my fabulousness. Ugh. Again, more for me than for you so I can see what's going on with my turnout in my body here. Okay, there we go. So, got my rotators. My rotators are somewhere underneath all this extra weight. Um, lifting up, right up, out of my rib cage, shoulders down, neck lifted. Some people like to have their hands out here. Other people feel the hands should be here, right? I'm gonna keep them here for now. I'm just gonna start pressing through the shoes. I'm not gonna like try and break them anymore because they're already pretty broken in. And my feet are so bendy. Again, what I need to work on, and I noticed this just in my ballet class, is ankle strength and getting my balance back. Now it's a different kind of thing on point than it is um, on uh, releve half point, right? Both, you know, the muscles you're using, all of that. I'm going to press up both feet now. Yeah. The boxes are a little bit dead, too. You'll feel that roll through. I'm just going to feed in parallel. Press through. Yeah. I'm going to have to lean on the bar more today, for sure. Lifting up. Using those muscles. Lean down. Going up, Woo. plie over, pull through, yep, oh boy, do I have my work cut out for me, you guys, Woo. well, see how I'm kind of like pressing up, not rolling through slowly, because the shoes are dead, and again, I am way out of shape, we're going to come into first position here, again, I could cheat and like press myself into some kind of awesome 180, but I'm not doing it from my rotator, so that is a waste of time for me, all right? So I'm going to bring it forward a little bit. Yes, it's embarrassing. Absolutely, I admit it. I wish I could keep my 180 degree turnout, but it would be cheating in line, and that just sets me up for injuries, hip injuries, knee injuries, all kinds of things that I just can't afford to deal with. I'm not going to do it. So I'm going to use these rotators here. Feel those knees coming up, keep those heels together. Now let's see what I can do for a plie roll through. Mm. Oh yeah, way out of shape. I can feel it because I don't feel those muscles and the ligaments in my feet are not, um, what's the word, firing, if that makes any sense. And it's interesting because I, you know, I was trained in Vaganova also, so it's really weird bringing my heels together. I'm not used to doing that. I really want to be out here. And some people believe that that's the way to do it. Then your knees are fully straight if you have hyperextension, but then other people feel that's not as good. It's interesting. It's just two different schools of thought, which you guys can argue about all you want in the chat. I've heard pros and cons on both sides. I feel like for me right now, having the heels connected helps me personally engage all of my muscles and my legs better right now. Because I'm so out of shape, that's where I'm at right now. So I'm going to go with the heels together for now. Now, a few of those. This might be a very short class, you guys. You know, when I first started point, I was nine years old. And we did it at the end of ballet class. And it was only about, I think, 10, 15 minutes at the bar. Every about, so I had like, what, two, three ballet classes a week, maybe starting out. And at the end of each class, 15, maybe 20 minutes of very simple exercises at the bar. So again, going back to those basics, I'm feeling like those roll throughs I'm not even ready to really do more roll throughs. So I'm going to go now to plie releves, right? So getting up. And then after that, I'm going to try something else that I learned at Beacon. So right now I'm just going to go for the plie releve. 
Yeah, that's good. That's engaging muscles. I'm feeling the knee muscles engaging and popping up. I'm feeling the uh, muscles in my arch are engaging better. So I'm going to go with that for now. No more of these roll throughs. I would recommend starting maybe more with something like this. Lifting up underneath that belly button. Engaging muscles. You can probably see all the tension in my shoulders and neck because I feel nervous because I'm like, oh my God, I haven't done this in a long time and I've had foot injuries in the past. I don't want to repeat that. Hey, my husband's off camera. <laughs> <laughs> Again, if I just sit in my feet, they'll roll over. I'm trying to pull back ever so slightly from how far my foot could go so that I'm not sitting on my arch. You can see because my feet are so bendy. Which, yeah, everyone goes, oh, they're so pretty. But you know what? They can be a curse. There we go. Now I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it through my big toe, and these muscles are engaging now. That's much better. Whew. Okay. I'm gonna stop. Rest. Oh man. Yeah. So many muscles I have not used in a long time. It's interesting. I'm hoping anyone who watches this, you're learning, you're seeing what not to do, what you don't like, who the heck does this girl think she is anyway, yada, yada, yada. Ah. Yep, I need some water. Again, if you're just coming back, it's important to keep yourself hydrated. Well, that's important anytime. It's important to take your time and do it right so if you really want to come back properly. And that's what I'm trying to do here. So I'm going to try this next exercise that I learned in Beacon, New York from Kenneth Ludden, excellent teacher. And um, he has books on all of this. You know, he performed with and helped coach Margot Fontaine, or he was, you know, he was, he was mentored by Margot Fontaine, like all this stuff. He, it's an amazing story. He's great. And uh, I want to think this comes from Chiquetti, but I could be wrong. It could be just his. But something he did was that you're in first, right? You're lifting up. Everything is lifted. And then you press down. I'm pressing my toes down to the ground. Like almost like this kind of feeling, right? So press, 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 press. And the goal is to go into releve without any plie. I've not done this in a long time. Let's see. Not quite. You don't even want to roll through the foot. You want to just come up. I'm going to try again. Pressing, pressing, pressing my toes in the ground. You might be asking, well, what does this do, Georgia? That strength, when I was doing that, it enabled me to have so much strength in my, in, when I would do like a PK arabesque and then roll down through, I had so much control. Um, now, his school of thought was that you never try and roll through the foot. Other people think that's absolutely ridiculous, and you always roll through the foot. There's different schools of thought for all of this. So... At this point in my career, because I've been doing this my whole life, I'm trying this out. If you're going to try this stuff out, if you are still developing, right? So, I mean, I was still, my body was still growing and changing up until the time I was around, I don't know, 22, it started to really kind of settle in. Um, you want to check with your coach and your teacher. Everyone's going to have a different opinion, but if you're going to play with this stuff, be at the bar so you can really be careful as you're trying it out. I'm lifting up, lifting up, lifting up, lifting up, lifting up. Up. my 
eyes up and out, not down. And I start thinking my eyes want to go down. All right, I'm stop, rest for a minute. Stick out my calves. That feels good, actually. It's pretty hot out here. I'm in California, but I love working in my garage because I get a good sweat, which I've always liked. I do not like a cold room. I don't know how the dancers in Russia do it. <laughs> Assuming it's always cold over there, which I don't know. I've only been to the Ukraine once. Not the Bolshoi, not the Kirov. I don't know what it's like in the studios, so. But I guess whatever you grow up in, you become used to. Hopefully you guys can see, if I'm relaxed, if I'm relaxed, look at that, that means that the stomach is out, butt's out, relaxed. Something I've been really working on, rather than tucking, which is what I always wanted to do when I was younger, and I think actually hurt my mobility and tightened my hip flexors and really messed up a lot of things for me, I'm really trying to keep this neutral spine that I've been working on with Pilates, right? So keeping the neutral spine and lifting up and forward, but then engaging these muscles back here. And when I engage these, then this front part starts to flatten out. You probably can't see it because good Lord, am I way out of shape. But like you see how my knees just always want to roll forward. When I engage, then the knees start to pull back over the feet and also my ankles, which always want to roll in and like that, roll in, they lift up. Now I'm standing on my foot properly. So everything is engaged lifted, wrapping, and that is a strong base to stand on instead of that, right? That versus that. Okay, hopefully you can tell. If not, my apologies. I'm going to work on these relays again. Again, I'm sharing all this with you guys so you can see sort of my thought process, but then also Showing up for you guys really forces me to continue to work on it. It's like accountability. I mean, that's the thing I miss most from class. Showing up for a ballet class in person, there's a different kind of accountability, right? You have to be on time. You have to kind of, you have to make an effort. You're in front of other people. You're in front of a real teacher, right? Even on Zoom, it's like, well, I could just turn my camera off and I can half-ass it. And I don't have to really hold my arm that well. I mean, I'm sure a lot of you, if you're dedicated dancers, you are doing your utmost best anyway, but it's not the same, right? So somehow for me, even if like no one's watching this live stream, the fact that it's live and someone could be watching makes me feel more accountable. So I thank you guys for that. Pressing into those toes, pressing, 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 pressing. See my heels just starting to come up off the floor. One more. And I'm going to stop this for today. Do something else with my work on derasement. <sighs> yep. Okay. So, blue rays, oh, it's much better if you have a nice long bar. This is all we have here. This is another thing I learned from Ken Ludd in, in New York, and I love this. I thought it was the best, the best blue ray technique I have learned ever and that is starting from here right so you're in fifth position now I'm going to it's been a long time here I'm going to flex the back foot I'm going to pull it across not the hips just the foot and put it down and then transfer the weight flex the front foot put it back into fifth susu flex the back foot pull it across Oh, you can see I'm already making mistakes, sickling the foot and whatnot. I'm just going to do this nice and slow. Flex, pull. And you can see, I don't know if you can see my right front foot is starting to shake a bit. It's because it's tired. So I've got to come down and rest. 
I have not been on point in so long. I can feel it starting to shake. If you start to feel your foot shake, rest. Again, these shoes are not optimal because they're pretty broken in. I often use these shoes just for a regular ballet class because it's nice to work through a point shoe. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay, I'm going to try the other side at the left foot front. And you'll see where it's going. This is the slow part of learning the technique of this bouet, but it's fabulous. I should do a whole video on this. It's amazing. And one. I am still cheating my hips a bit. I can feel it. I can feel so many things cheating because I'm just so out of shape. The point is eventually when you bure, your knees are not bending. Your knees are staying straight and just your ankles are pulling you across the floor. And when you do it right, it looks amazing. You look like you are floating. Instead of that, these knees like a needle, like a sewing machine. And some people believe in the sewing machine thing. But when this one's done right, it's like you're totally still on top, but just your feet are moving. And it's gorgeous. I've seen videos of some dancers doing it, and it's beautiful. But my feet are already tired, so nope, I'm going to stop on that today. So anything else I want to do? I'm going to do a few susus and Asia pays, and then I can already feel my feet are tired. So I'm going to stop shortly after that, and I'll do a little foot cool down with you guys. You can choose to watch or not watch. So I'm going to do plie susu. I'm not even, I'm not, because I want to do plie relevé passe, but I'm not there yet. One-footed, I'm just not there yet. My ankles are not, I don't feel confident in my ankle strength yet. Not in these shoes, especially. Now, I'll tell you this. You can get a real strong shoe. I've heard that that's one of the main reasons people use gainer mendons is that there are certain shoes that they can hold up an elephant. And I'm not talking about fat. I'm talking about just, let's just say someone who's had, let's take out the elephant analogy because that's bad. And I love elephants. And I don't want to speak ill of elephants. I love elephants. So, but if you're someone who has zero technique, zero training or whatever, there are certain shoes that are built, they'll hold you up. That's really not how point shoes should be, actually. And it should be built in a way that you have the ability, you're, you're supposed to complement your technique and your work, right? But then again, here I am at 40, and I'm going, man, maybe I should get a pair of gainer mediums. I just don't want to rely on the shoe. You don't want to rely on the shoe to hold you up. The shoe is supposed to just um, uh, complement, like I think I already said, complement your technique so that now I think that's why there are dancers who they can do 12, 13, 20 turns because normally, without the fancy shoe to help them, they might only be able to do six. Now they can just stay up there, right? Because they've got all that great technique on a strong shoe. Um, but if you're just sitting there doing releves, but you're not engaging your muscles, you're not engaging your stomach, you're not lifting up, leaning on the bar, or not, you know, whatever, it's a waste of time. And you're, you know, it, it, that's not the way to do it. Anyway. Aren't you love all of this rambling and... Uh, What's the word? Lecturing? Yeah, lecturing is always nice on a live stream. Woohoo! Okay, let me just try some. I'm pulling back on my shoes again because if I go all the way over. Break my foot off. And finish. That's it. That's it for me for today. And I'll tell you, if that's all you do, just for today, you've done something towards improving your point technique. Now, I'm going to now do some cool down, and I will see if I can get the chat back. Maybe no one's chatted, quite frankly. Oh, we have a couple. I don't do point work. That's okay. Hopefully you learned something. Have any idea on how to do better with balancing? Yes. There's a lot of different things involved. It depends on the shape of your foot, your build, everything. But it's finding, finding that place. Once you find a good place, you need strength in your rotators and muscles to, to hold yourself up. You need ankle strength to hold that balance. So spending a lot of time just balancing in coupe and passe at the bar and staying as long as you can. Don't let your ankle drop. Stay. Stay. Keep holding it. Staying in that releve. Even if you have to hold on to the bar and keep trying to balance, 
you want to get to where your ankles can hold that balance for a nice long time. But eventually, it's really, it's also about lifting up and out, up and out, up and higher, like you're a marionette and someone's holding you by the tips of your ears with these strings. And that's lifting up as your legs are shooting down into the ground. So you've got that push-pull, right? Well, or pull-pull, I should say. And that's what's holding you in that balance. Those are different mental things to think about, okay? So, four feet. Hopefully that helps. Okay. I don't know if I can come back far enough so you can see. But since I wore these little scooty boos, uh, toe pads, it's interesting. I could feel, you know, they have this um, seam on the toe pad. And I could feel it underneath my toe. And I did not like it. My toe did not like it. I'm feeling, though, my toenails just a little bit long. I did not trim them. Now, my toes, compared to most, the, toes, the toenails are cut really close. But I like them even closer when I'm dancing. So I'm going to need to trim them more, right? Um, also, if I've talked about this before, this is good. So I don't have any blisters today. Um, I may tape them anyway next time again. I've got to play with that. But my, I have a Grecian foot, and the Grecian foot is where the second toe is longer than the first. And this is actually something I wish someone had told me when I was coming up as a dancer. I don't think anyone did. There's different kinds of feet. The ideal foot for dancers who want to dance on point is it's another, I forget what it's called, but all the toes are in one line. It makes this nice, like, just box, right? It's like this nice box that sits there, and it's a good, strong platform for you to dance on. If you're me, and this is my big toe, and here are my little toes longer than the big toe, it creates this really unstable balancing point. I'm balancing on the edge of a knife, and but my platform underneath my toes also is off because this is this part. I don't know here if I can show you. When I try to balance in releve, it, if, if I'm right in the middle of my foot, I feel again like I'm dancing on the edge of a knife. I either want to fall to this side of my platform or roll. There's the top, there's that bone right in the middle with my long toe. I roll over here, and then I'm sinking into my big toe where I have the bunion, so I'm trying to lean on that part of my platform, right? And I mean, I'd love to be able to just balance on this tiny little piece of bone here in the middle, but I'm always just feeling like I'm going to roll off one way or the other. It's really frustrating, right? And I wish someone had worked with me more on that to develop the right kind of strength, the right kind of place to balance, all of that. So I'm trying to figure it out on my own, and we'll try to continue to find coaches and teachers and mentors who might be able to help me further with it. I'll need to continue to do more research online, etc. Because, you know, it's just different when, you, when you're when you not dancing professionally anymore. Um, so, now that I've got my shoes off, what I want to do, there's different um, cool exercises you can do. <clears throat> Excuse me. And this is my, like, little baggie of goodies. I love this. A foot roller, okay? You can find these at places like Target or Bed Bath & Beyond or whatever. Um, I've had this thing, I'm sure, since 98, 97. It lasts forever. You take it and just roll the foot. Sometimes, like if I'm in class and I can feel my feet are just cramping that day, maybe I didn't drink enough water the night before, maybe whatever's going on, I'll just keep this right by the bar. And then between exercises, while the teacher is demonstrating the next exercise, um, assuming that you know you can do this kind of thing, you, you have to check if you're a pre-professional and you're in a studio that doesn't allow you to have a lot of stuff by the bar, which a lot of them are like that, you may not be able to do this. But at a professional level, and all kinds of junk. <laughs> Let's see here. That feels great. So I'm just gently rolling out, you can see, the muscles in my arch. That's great. So that helps, right? And taking the time to do this now, again, when you go professional and you're going from rehearsal to rehearsal and class to class and all of that, you get to some times where you're like, I don't have time to stop and do this. But trying to take time, just a little bit of time, a few, even a minute or two throughout the day can make a big difference. I'll roll that foot out as well. Oh, I like, like right here, I've got this meaty part here in my arch. It really likes to cramp up. There we go. That's a better. Yay. There we go. I think here's a cartilage. Getting all of that foot in there. 
right? Okay, so now I don't have my hand sanitizer on me. This is kind of gross. So don't touch your face after you do this, but I'm going to take the time to gently kind of pull my toes apart a little bit and give them a gentle massage, especially because I have my bunions. I'm just going to do a gentle up and down, right? So I've got the toe and I'm pulling it kind of up out of its socket a little bit. And then you can take each toe and just kind of give it a little rub, a little rub love, right? And then get those toes to open up. I'm going to pull them all back, right? Kind of press into my hand and then press it over. You can do your typical toe stretch, but at this point, I'm really just trying to give it a bit of a mini massage. Something to do um, at the end of the, the night before you go to sleep, doing some gentle stretching. Nothing fancy, but just a gentle hamstring stretch, a little bit of toe massage, whatever. It definitely helps me sleep better at night when I take the time to do it, which I don't always or rarely. <laughs> it depends. So there are those nights where it's like you just want to go home and go to sleep. But Taking that little bit extra time to do the self-care. Oh boy, does it help with longevity. Okay. Now, we do a little bit of, I do have a um, TheraBand. TheraBands are great. I'm not going to bother with that today. Today, I'm just going to do a little of this. I love this exercise. I feel like they teach it to you when I like get your first summer camp, right? Your summer, first summer dance camp. You're just pulling those feet across the floor. And you can use towels if you want to try and pick up and put it down, right? You're picking the towel up and dropping it with your toes. And it's just getting that um, dexterity in your toes strengthens. And again, you're trying to increase that. When my when uh, my coach up here in California, um, Diane Larizen, came up to me, and I was pointing my foot. It was kind of like that, and she went, she took her finger and pointed right at this, like this cup right here under the there. It's like point, 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 point. And I felt, oh my God, this whole other level of pointing. It was amazing. So, oh wow. And my foot just cramped up. So you can see it's been a long time since I've really worked that. Now that I got that cramp, I gotta re re stretch it back out, try to release it. Oh. Wow, 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 wow. So that's what you want to try and strengthen that cup in the toe, cup in the foot underneath. It's like right, if here's sort of your where your relevé happens, and that butt from there, and there's your arch, just underneath here is where you want to right here, point, 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 yeah, that's attractive. Oh, yeah. Thinking about blah, blah, blah. doing this, it just like releases so much tension in my ankles, which feels really good. And of course, the calves, as you can see, are getting a bit of a shakeout. I love doing this. I'll do this at the beginning of class, too. Like, I'll do a full body shakeout. So, like this, put all your limbs in the air and you shake everything, like for a minute. It actually really warms things up, which is nice, and releases a lot of tension. As I keep doing it, my ankles really start to release and open up. Oh, that feels so good in my hands, too, because I do carry tension in my hands, especially because I type at a keyboard now every day, all day. Oh, my gosh. So try doing that. That really helps. I'm watching myself do it on camera. Oh my God, it's hilarious. Anyway, so that's it for today. I'm going to show up again next week after class and do some more point work. Um, so if you want to be here for it, I'll be here live streaming it. But I want to thank you guys for watching. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please be sure to put them in the box below. I'm happy to answer them. I'm not going to touch my face. 
because I just put my hands on my icky feet and I need to wash them. But yeah, so stay tuned for more videos. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, shade if you need to. Uh, continue the conversation. Just always be polite with one another and your opinions. I'd appreciate that. And that's it for today. So please stay safe out there. I hope you're all doing okay. You've been watching Ballerina Badass. My name is Georgia Reed. Never give up. Never stop dancing. I love you all. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Toy, toy, toy. <laughs> and now we turn it off.